<laughs> Morning, guys. So, do you want to know how to evenly wear your tires and also figure out that maybe the tire, uh, proper tire pressure? Well, it's quite easy, actually. Um, there's a couple methods you could do. Um, the best method that I've done is simply with a piece of chalk, but I'm gonna try another method that I haven't tried yet, but I've been kind of told that it may work. Um, basically, you just gotta be able to see how much contact your tire is putting down, right? So technically, a gravel road or a dirt road um, should be able to determine that. So I'm gonna hit up a gravel road right now, and we're gonna see if I can get like a nice view of the tread. If not, we're just gonna simply put chalk down and I'm gonna kinda show you guys exactly how to go about doing this. This isn't a 100% like even wear kind of thing. The reason being is that it doesn't account for the highway driving for the how much force that is going into it. I kinda learned this from another uh, Canadian buddy here. I'm just gonna simply uh, show you the text here. Okay, so he says to me, this was over a year ago I found out, chalk test is for low speed traction, doesn't account for high speed. Uh, central field goal force. I, someone will correct me on that. Um, yeah. So I was like, I didn't understand it at the time what he meant. And basically, he says, no. The faster the tire spins, the greater the force will be on the center of the tread because of the tire because the tire is flexible because it's just a piece of rubber. So internal temperature will also cause pressure differences between tires. So this isn't like I said a. Uh, uh, a cure for everything you basically you just got to make sure you keep up with your rotations too but at least this kind of gives you a general idea because being at 45 psi or max tire pressure versus 30 psi or even a little bit lower pressure will determine how your tire wears so let's get right into it and find out what my brand new cooper st max 255 85 16 tires want to be happy at uh toyo mts were happy around the 30 psi cold I'll get into that in a little bit there too. Okay guys, so we are outside now. Um, I just wiped off the tire with a cloth on a few of the blocks of the tread, and then I did some rotations. Um, you wanna do this 100% straight, no turning or anything, cause that changes a little bit there. Um, so what I did was I go up, I did about five miles an hour. Uh, no, you don't wanna go super fast. And then I went backwards, same amount of pace, and then I stopped. And so after I wiped off a decent amount of tread, um, judging by how this is all dirty here and then this isn't dirty shows me where I wiped off so indeed gravel or some sort of dirt will actually make it noticeable for you to see the the difference when you see your tread pattern going good over here but on the edges it's not touching completely means I have too much pressure now being that it's halfway on the block means it's probably only needing about two or three psi so but we're gonna also do the chalk test on here just to show you guys to make sure that both work. And I will try it on the gravel road just to see if it actually works on gravel or if I have to be on pavement. So just to show you guys, I did the chalk on here. Uh, we're about to roll it. So I do, you do as much as you want. You, I mean, you could do the whole tire if you wanted to, but I do a good amount of chunk on the top end just so there's enough there to see a little bit of a difference. Um, so you wanna make sure you fill it up nicely. If you don't put enough on, you won't be able to see the difference. So there's the front there. Then, or there's the, that was the rear, and here's the front. So, like I said, lots of coverage. So now, let's see how they're wearing. All right, guys, so you do a couple rotations, like I said, you don't want to just do one, you want to make sure it wears it in nicely, and you want to make sure you obviously land back on the same spot. So just poke your head outside, and if you got maybe a wider stance or whatever, I mean, I can see the chalk from just looking out the back of my, uh, on the outside of my truck here. So, and indeed, it works on the gravel, like I said. Um, it's not exactly getting to these edges, but it's getting all the way here. And as you see there, this is still fresh. So it, it is indeed not touching the sidewall, uh, the side chunks as much. So therefore, when these actually heat up even more, because these are actually technically kind of cold, it's warm out, but it's still a cold PSI, like I haven't driven far yet. Um, these are gonna heat up more, and it's gonna be more contact on the center. So therefore, Technically, I actually get better mileage because there's less contact on the tire, but also it's gonna wear down the center so much more. And like, so basically you'll have all this wearing, this is not ever gonna touch, and that won't be good. So there's the rear, and here's the front. So, as you can see, it actually seems like it's touching this sidewall a little bit more, simply because I have more weight up at the front. The rear of these trucks are actually weigh a few hundred pounds lighter than the front but I also have a big battery up front here, so that's actually putting a little more weight on. 
So, but as you can see, it's kind of wearing there. So this actually doesn't need much more to get down to the side box. So, but otherwise this is pretty good. Uh, we'll go to the other side. And so this side here actually doesn't seem as touching as much either, simply because the battery's on that side and also the tank is actually on that side. So there's that. So you gotta adjust it accordingly to your truck's weight, obviously, because of how much it'll sag down. So, because the more, more weight down, the more pressure it gets put down on these tires. So I gotta go down a little bit on this side too. And obviously over here, I gotta go way down because uh, these aren't even really touching at all. You can see how much chalk is left on them. So there's still quite a bit. All right, so before I was sitting at about 34 PSI, and right now I'm sitting at about 32 all the way around except for that passenger one, which I gotta lay it down a little bit more. Now let's see what they're reading. So looks like it's still not quite touching. I'm gonna have to go down to about 30, I think, on these. Uh, basically, it looks like it's gonna run about the same tire pressure as my Toyo NTs. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll uh, finalize this. Um, but keep in mind, guys, like if you are getting full contact at 30 PSI or 35 and that's like where it's fully contacting, that's where it's gonna make full contact. But after that, if you start driving and heating up your tires, obviously the tire, it's gonna start going more into the center. So you gotta accommodate for heat and driving and all that, yada, yada, yada. And also, like I said, with the whole driving and the, the force of it and all the flexible uh, of the tire. So in other words, you gotta go down a few more PSI. As long as you, I'd say about two or three, uh, you can go as much as five, but it depends on what you're running. You don't wanna be squishing these tires and having such low PSI, but you just gotta go accommodating for the weather and your driving and all this and that. So, but otherwise I'm gonna put these down to 30 and then we're, I'm gonna do a quick test and then that'll be at the end of this video to help you guys uh, properly even wear your tires. Um, and fun fact too, I would rotate about every 3,500 miles or 5,000 K. Um, I do my tires every 5,000 and well, it's easier to do at an even number like that because 5,000 is, uh, 5, is a tire rotation, 10,000 is my oil change and a tire rotation. So. And that's how I made those Toyo NTs last so long because I did it every 5,000 uh, kilometers or about 3,500 miles. And Toyota is uh, 5,000 miles or 8,000 K. So I do a little bit more than uh, the, the normal stuff there. So uh, proper tire pressure and nicely uh, rotated tires is the key to even wear and better wear on your tires. All right, guys. So I started off at 34 PSI. This was basically how it sat. Um, like I said, it's about 25 degrees Celsius out, but is about what 80, I think some degrees. So it's a little warm. I'm sweating already. Um, right now the front is sitting about 2930. The rear is at about 28. So we'll see how much they heat up. Basically it sounds like as long as I keep it around the 30, I'll be fine. Um, obviously come winter time, I'm gonna have to put a lot more in. So, or maybe depend on if I go somewhere else. For all I know, maybe on a long highway drive, they'll actually heat up even more, and I might have to let a little bit more out. But if it's, say, like really hot one day, and it's like a little bit more than usual, don't worry about it too much, because if you lower it, if you lower your pressure more, then when the next day comes, if it cools right off, you'll be so low on your pressure, you'll probably have to air up a little bit, because you can't be driving too fast on low tire pressure, basically at around 28 and 30 you're safe for pretty much all speeds well, to a certain point but obviously when you start speeding up it'll heat up but under anything under 25 uh, even cold uh, you can only do so much uh, speeds so keep that in mind too for your tire pressures there so do not go too too low and like i said it varies on every vehicle so for mine it's 100 percent stock i got some weight in the bed i have a battery up front a uh, big one it's like 80 pounds so uh, right now it seems to be about the 28 to 30 is the happy me, uh, happy mark round. I'll just kind of show you guys all the tread pattern again and then that'll be it. So here again, for some reason, the driver's side. Um, oh man, that's a big, that's a big bug. Look at that, look at that, look at that, big. No, no, don't, don't, don't come near me. Nope, you did, you did. Holy crap, I don't know what that was, but I killed him. So um, this is how it's looking doesn't seem like all the chalk is going away it's like the very edge here I don't really want to lower it anymore holy crap there's another one um, so this will be good enough for me 
Um, like I said, uh, I might play with it a little bit more, but I think overall I don't want to go any lower just simply because it'll heat up enough and it'll keep it nice and uh, worn evenly. But like I said, tire rotation's critical for this. So as long as you keep up to that, your tread pattern will wear evenly and obviously depending on each side. So if you put this side to that side, this side to that side, whatever, they'll all kind of wear in evenly. That's how it works, right? So there's that one. There's no chalk left on this one. As you see, there's a little bit left there. This is all contacting now before it wasn't, right? So nice clean pattern there. And that one's sitting at about 29, 30. This one, same thing. There's no chalk left. Nice uh, even contact patch. And this one, it's pretty much there. I mean, it's a smidge, but like I said, I'm not worried about it enough for that. So we are good to go. So I hope this video helps you guys. Uh, you know, if, uh, if now you understand what it means to chalk test your tires, well, there you go. <laughs> I do this so I can save my tires as much as I can and obviously keep it nice and uh, um, evenly worn, but also for a better ride. Um, the lower pressure you have, the more spongy it is. So uh, it soaks up the bumps a lot more. So that's another good thing. And make sure your wheel alignments are always good too, because that will really screw up your tire tread um, a lot. So keep up to date with that and you'll be good to go.